early on as well that is a pathway through. It seems to me that this whole idea of being a teacher for very long... How can schools provide CPD for the staff who are not teachers? Find out how this cluster of schools in the London borough of Sutton solved the problem. Right, Agenda Item 7 is our support staff training conference. Um, last year we held a very successful support staff training um, event. Which we For too long in education, the teachers have been given priority in training. A school is a huge organisation and the teaching staff is normally about half of the actual number of people that work in a school. David Hall chairs the termly meeting of the group of trainers in the consortium of five secondary schools in Sutton. The group plans professional development for school staff across the five schools and others in the borough. Now we've identified a date, but again because of funding we've got to look at a different type of model of how we're going to provide the opportunities for... When the group got together in 2004, the professional training priority was to improve the standard of teaching in the members' schools. However, very quickly the programme changed and very much we developed from being a teacher training organisation into one that was looking at continuing professional development in a wider sense and also now increasingly workforce remodelling. The consortium realised it was important to make the most of the school's many support workers. Laura Dalton works at Glenthorne, one of the schools in the consortium. I'm personnel manager, so I deal with anything to do with the staff. Um, within what we would class as admin staff, so we're a big group, but we all work in different areas and we all have different line managers. So I'm not in any particular little group within the admin staff. Uh, I'm a sort of standalone. <laughs> Mary Dale is a cover supervisor at Glenthorne. I was the first one appointed at the school, uh, and this is thanks to the TDA workforce reforms that introduced the, the job of cover supervisor. I've been doing it now here at Glenthorne for five years. The consortium of trainers decided to bring support staff like Mary and Laura from all five schools together for an afternoon conference, and the technicians filmed it. We had a programme of different seminars, discussion groups and outside speakers looking to route ways and pathways to develop their career. There were staff from all throughout the borough. Um, I was quite amazed at how many people were there. They divided into little workshops and you could choose, I think you chose two out of three um, for everyone to go to. I went to one on training opportunities for support staff um, and... Um, you know, how they could gain qualifications. What surprised me was actually um, the variety of support staff roles um, and how they're carried out in different schools and how they all operate differently. Mary was invited to speak at the event. The purpose of my speech really was to um, talk about the foundation degree that I, that I did. Um, and to let people know, cover supervisors and teaching assistants, that there are formal qualifications out there that they can, they can gain. It was just really interesting because although I've, you know, I've worked with her for a long time, I hadn't really, you know, focused on what um, what she'd actually had to do to get to where she is now. The conference was a wonderful. It was a great success. The staff really loved it. The atmosphere was really supportive and jolly. But what did the support staff themselves think? I think the biggest thing for me was sort of networking and um, I mean there were people there that I, I knew already um, but it was just nice to sort of sit with other people from other schools and, and sort of, um, you know, you, a topic would come up and you could say, well how, well how are you dealing with that in your school and, and you can think, oh yeah, well, I might take that back and, and use that which, um, you know, it's it's always good to to do that and we, we don't get those opportunities really. I felt it was actually recognition for support staff and the roles that they do. Um, I think there are lots of uh, events and things for teachers, and there, so there should be. But I think for support staff, we, uh, I think personally we feel a little bit forgotten sometimes. And I do think it, it was really encouraging to be recognised. And I think that was, that was one of the really key things for me. It provided them with time to talk. 
it provided them with people who would give them some expert advice on how to carry their own careers or training forward. But more importantly, it showed that they were valued. And I think it's important that we don't lose a focus on the support staff, because what sports staff do in school is equally as important as what teaching staff do in school. And they need to be at all levels valued accordingly.